right, I think my last recording actually had number 20 on it, but we'll start here anyway. So they can overlap by one question, okay? So this one says, simplify the following expression, justifying all steps, showing work, and identifying the Pythagorean identity used. There is one Pythagorean identity, and you have to identify it to get full credit. What is the one Pythagorean identity you're going to use? So go to the reference sheet. Find where it says Pythagorean identities or Pythagorean relations. And it says 1 plus cosine squared can be exchanged for a cosecant squared. So I'm actually going to write that over here because it says identify which one you used. So that means this is trading for a cosecant squared. Okay, then I have a sine squared. I'll leave that alone. I have a cosine squared. I'll leave that alone. And a secant. Okay, now what do you want to do with some of this mess? Okay, so cosecant here is 1 over sine squared. And can I write this as sine squared over 1, guys, just so we don't cancel something goofy? And cosine squared would just be cosine squared over 1? But what's secant? Okay. Do you think Hofbauer would accept this as showing work? No, I think that's beautiful. Okay. Then what? Sine squared, sine squared. But be careful. Only one of these cosines cancels, so there's still a cosine up here. So it all simplifies down to what? Okay. Probably, I would guess, a two-point question, maybe even three, okay? Any questions? It's not any harder than that on the, okay? There's not like a justify or verify question that's miserable where you got to get a common denominator or anything goofy like that. And you have the reference sheet. Everybody feel comfortable they can do that? All right, next, this is the reference sheet. And I may have illegally added a little note up here on your reference sheets. It says for these, A is greater than B, yes? Okay. And for hyperbolas, how do you know which one's A? Yes, A is always underneath the positive, okay? And I think that's what I wrote. Did I write A squared under positive term or something? Okay, everybody good? All right, with all that in mind, number 21, I think most of you could figure out what type of conic it is, maybe just by looking. Anybody know? There's only one term that's squared, right? The x is squared, but not the y. So it is going to be a parabola. But it says right in standard form. Well, the standard form on your sheet says for a parabola that has an x squared, it would be x minus h equals 4p, y minus k. Does that sound right? Anybody know how? All we have to do is get it in that form. We don't have to find P. We don't have to find H. We don't have to find K. This one's kind of weird, though. What happens? Okay. So if I leave X squared over here, I'll subtract a 2Y and a 10 to the other side. Is that looking a little bit more like the right form? Okay. Take out a negative 2 over there. Now, does it look like the right form? Yep, you could answer it like that if you wanted to put in x minus 0 squared equals negative 2, y plus 5, you could. But this answer right here is what I would have said. No, because it would be a negative y then. 
If you took out only a 2, you'd have a negative y plus 5, and that's it's got to be a positive y in there, okay? And I don't know that this, the one on the test may be a hyperbola or an ellipse, okay? Any questions? Yeah. All right. We're going to practice completing the square in a couple minutes here. What is this one, guys? Identify the kind of conic. Ooh, that's the easiest point ever, I hope. It's got a plus, so it's an ellipse. Okay. What can you tell me about it? Okay. HK would be 3 and negative 2. Um, okay. A squared is the bigger one when it's an ellipse, right? So A squared is 16 and B squared is 4. So A is 4 and B is 2, just like uh, Sarah said. I just wanted to make sure we all knew where that came from. All right, now, the Hofbauer method would be to go over here and start graphing. Go to 3, negative 2, and that's the center. And the major axis, the A tells me to go how far? Four. And that four was under the Y here. So I should go four up and down. But could we have figured that out differently? What is the vertices? What does it say for vertices, guys? On your sheets. I don't think so. Yep. Should be H comma K plus or minus A. So if you did that, if you wrote three comma negative two plus or minus four, you would get what two ordered pairs for the vertices? Is that where we just plotted them? Okay. Now it says to draw a complete graph. What are we missing? Foci, but also the, that it asks for. What does it not ask for that will help us draw? Yeah, the other going the other way, we need to go how far out? You could find those as ordered pairs. They're the covertices, but it doesn't ask for them. If you did, you'd have... Uh, 3 plus or minus 2 comma negative 2, which would be 5 negative 2 and 1 negative 2. Did I do that right? Okay. Foci. Guys, you got to find C correctly. I This is the way I have it memorized. You guys get to use the sheet. But if this is a plus, do you remember? Then what do you do to those two? You subtract. If this was a minus because it was a hyperbola, then you do the opposite and you add to find C. Okay, but the sheet says C squared equals A squared minus B squared, doesn't it? Is that what it says on your sheet? Okay, so 16 minus 4 is C squared, which makes C what? Square root of 12, which is 2 square roots of 3. All right, so the foci are at... What does it say on your sheet? They should be on the major axis, so it should be h comma k plus or minus c. Is that what it says? 3 comma negative 2 plus or minus 2 square roots of 3. Okay, can you leave it like that? Can you add this negative 2 and 2? No. You can leave it like that. If you want to find a decimal and put them on here, I'm okay. It does. It says sketch the function showing the center and the vertices. Okay, doesn't say you have to put the foci on the graph, as long as you label. So I'm sure you're going to get points for like this, a point for the graph, a point for the vertices. So this is like a four point question probably. Okay, but easy. Yes. Okay. This is not anybody's favorite. Okay. Hyperbolas, coming up with an equation. There's room for you to sketch if you want. It says the vertices are at 3, 0, 
and negative 3, 0. What does that mean, guys? It's got to open sideways, doesn't it? If those are the vertices, because it says it's a hyperbola, okay? If you're not sure, look right here. Let me help you with this. You're not sure. Here's the hyperbolas. It says the vertices have the same K value if it opens sideways. They have the same H value if it opens up and down. What do these have in common? The same K value, yes? The Y or the K value. All right. Now, the center should be the midpoint of the vertices. That would be my way of thinking of it. What's the midpoint of those vertices? Zero, zero. So can you start the equation already? If it's opening sideways, which comes first? So I could write x minus 0 squared, y minus 0 squared, or I could just write x squared and y squared. Do you see how we're doing here? We okay? Everybody down with the start of this equation? Okay. Now back up to this. What's the other thing they tell us? Well, here the vertices were at h plus or minus a k. Let's go back and talk about that for a minute. This is h plus or minus a k. So if h and k are 0, 0, then a has to be 3. Where does a go? Under the positive one, is it just an a though? It's an a squared, so that's a 9. All right, what direction did this open? Well, it opens left and right. Yeah, I don't care. All right, now we got to figure out the b. If you go back here one more time to the one that's opening sideways, what is the slope of the asymptote supposed to be? b over a. This slope is supposed to be B over A. Now, they could have reduced, but did they? Because A is 3, so B must be exactly 5. Okay, there's one like that. If you have trouble, I think there's a little more practice on some of the other reviews. Okay, I am going to run some more copies of this SLO packet in case... How many of you think you would like another copy on Monday so you could practice some of these again? Two, three, okay. I'll make a handful of extra copies. All right, number 24 is I think the last one on conics, isn't it? Okay. All right, compare the characteristics. No, no. Just kidding. Okay. All right. Compare the characteristics of these two parabolas given a graph of one and an equation of the other. Okay. Which parabola has a vertex with a greater y value? So this one talks about vertex. Which parabola would have a focus with a greater x value? Okay. This sounds really complicated, but I don't think it's as bad as it seems. Okay. Can you tell where the vertex is over here? Okay, the vertex is at 3, negative 4. Now, I can't tell where the focus is exactly, right? It would be a huge pain in the neck to figure out where the focus is. But what can you tell me about the focus? Yeah, it's somewhere inside of here on the axis of symmetry, right? So it goes 3, comma something. And it's something is less than, it's above negative 4 because it's inside the parabola. All right, let's just hang with that for a second. What can you tell me about this one over here? Okay, this one doesn't give us a center. It gives us a vertex, right? The vertex is 1, negative 3. Everybody okay? 
okay? And this value right out here is equal to what? Okay, so if I divide by four, what do I get? Be careful, one over 32. Can we find the focus for this guy? Which way does this open? Y is squared, so it opens sideways from one negative three is the vertex. Is it opening left or right? It's positive, so it's opening right. Okay, the focus would be in here somewhere. Can you tell me what the sheet says for the focus when it's opening to the right or left? Okay, so I need somebody to do that. Can you do one plus one thirty second? Be 33 over 32, right? Okay. 1.0 something. All right, so which parabola had a vertex with a greater y value? In other words, which one had a, a vertex that was up higher? This one, the vertex had a y value of negative four and this one had negative three, so the greater one is graph B. Everybody okay? Could you have just graphed the other one over here? It was at one negative three and it was going sideways. Could you tell which one had the higher vertex? Mm -hmm. Okay. Which problem would have a focus with a greater X value? Because look, the focus is over here somewhere for this one and this one's over here, right? We know X is three on this one and this one X was 33 over 32. So the greater X value was parabola A. I guess it says give an explanation. Okay. Um, uh, parabola A. Has focus at three something, right? Well, B has a focus at 33 over 32 or 1.03. So 3 is greater than 33 over 32. I don't know. I don't remember, honestly, if you get points for explaining on that one. If it, if it gives you room to explain, I'm sure you do. But I think the one on the final you can just logic through like one is way off to the left and down low and the other one's way off to the right and up high and it's not that bad okay everybody all right all right Ooh, are we good at this yet please tell me we're good at this by now completing the square x squared minus 9x. Oh, no, that's not even a nice number. Plus blank. Oh, plus a y squared plus 10y plus blank. And then we got to move that over the other side. So equals 1 plus blank. Yeah, another blank. Sorry. Okay. I don't know why this one's so miserable. I'm pretty sure it's not on the final. What would we get? Maybe it is. Maybe that's why I put one on here. What would this be? It's yeah, half of this, remember? And half of that is not nice. You can put 4.5. I don't care. And then you square it and you get... I'm just going to square it and literally write 81 over 4. I hope it's not like this on the final, but I don't remember. Half of this is what? Squared is 25. Okay, so someone type all that in, just give us a decimal. 25 plus one plus 20.25 is how much? Really? 
Okay, does that square root at all? Is it disgusting? Okay, the center for ours would be at nine halves negative five. The radius would be at the square root of 46.25, which is, let's just go with approximately what? Okay. I'm pretty sure the one on the final is not messy like that, okay? You don't have to graph it, though. So if you ended up with an equation that looked like this, I'm just making one up here. Could you still answer that? This is a totally an example, but the center would be where? With a radius of square root of seven and just leave it, okay? All right, type of conic. Minus in here, so it's a hyperbola. And what about A and B? This is A squared and B squared because A is under the positive one. So A is 2 and B is 6. What about H and K? Center is at negative 3, positive 2. So that's H and K. Oh, we didn't need all that. We're supposed to find the eccentricity. Just kidding. We don't have to graph it or anything. Eccentricity, the definition is on your sheet. It's C over A. Okay? So I know A is 2. <laughs> now I need a formula that says C squared equals what? Yes. So A squared was 4. B squared was 36. So square root of 40 would be square root of 4 times 10, 2 square roots of 10. Okay, those would divide out. We get square root of 10. Eccentricity is supposed to be more than 1 or less than 1 for the hyperbola? More than 1. And it, that's on the sheet, I think. It's on the reference sheet here. Right here it says hyperbola greater than 1. Okay, is square root of 10 greater than 1? Okay, would that be an important thing to check and double check that you did it right? Okay, now are we done with conics? Okay, I will say I think there's one more conic question on the other part of the final. Okay, all right, let's keep going with sequences. Do you find those formulas on the reference sheet? Okay, there's arithmetic, the explicit form. And the sum formula, and then there's geometric, the explicit form, and the sum formula. All right. What kind of a sequence is this? How do you check? Subtract these, subtract these, subtract these, and every time it's doing what? Decreasing by 50. Okay. And it's arithmetic. So we go look up that formula and it says this. So what will we write? You good? <laughs> yeah, you can put the 50 on the back. I don't know where the D is on the. You could distribute and simplify, but I will not take off points if you don't. Can anybody answer that question? How do you know if it's arithmetic or geometric? So if you, like, you subtract these two, and then you check the next two, and it's the same, and you check the next two, and it's the same, it's arithmetic. If that isn't working, then you take this one, divide it by this one, this one, divide it by this one, this one, divide it by this one, okay? It's going to be one or the other of those. And if you divide, it's got to be the same every time. So if it said 
175, I don't know, what's three-fourths of that? No, I was trying to make arithmetic. Here, 75 fourths, no, times three, two, which is what, 225 over four? Okay. So if you took this divided by this, this one divided by this one, and it gave you three fourths every time, that would be arith a ge geometric. I'm so helpful. Everybody's totally confused now, right? There's an example of geometric where R is three fourths, if I made them up right. All right. This is the one that we all struggled with, and it's the easier of the two, if you ask me. It's just not given. The a sub n is a sub n minus 1 minus 50, where we started with 220. And I don't care if you put the, tell me that a sub 1 is 220 out front or at the back. It doesn't matter. Or underneath it, just so it's there, right? If all you tell me is a sub n minus 1 minus 50, you won't get full credit. Do you want to practice with this geometric one? This one, an explicit one would be 100 times 3 fourths to the n minus 1. And the recursive would be a sub n minus 1 times 3 fourths, where the first term was 100. Okay. So that was just an extra example. It's not a sub zero though, because it's a sequence. So this is the first term. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Find the fifth term. Please tell me that you're just going to do what? Yeah. Four times negative two to the five minus one. Make sure you use parentheses. Somebody else getting that? Yep. Type it in your calculator. It'll take care of it. Otherwise, do the exponent first, but make sure you put the parentheses. Don't make silly mistake. Okay. This one. Now, several ways you could do this. If you can remember how to find the sequence thing on your calculator, the little summation symbol, go for it. It does not have to be in sequence mode. It will do the sum no matter what. Okay. If you can remember, you can find sum and then sequence and then 3x plus 2 comma. You'd need to repeat the variable and then 1 and 5. Could we do this by hand if we had to? You'd put in a 1 and get out a what? You'd put in a 2 and you'd get out 8. You'd put in a 3 and you'd get out 11. Hmm, what does it seem to be doing? Adding 3, so you'd have 14 and 17. And then it wants the sum, so you would do what? You know what? You might have wanted to do that anyway because you got to double check that it is what kind of a sequence. Do you understand what I'm saying? By putting those numbers in, you could clearly see that it was arithmetic, that it was adding three every time. Then the sum is just literally add them up 31, 42, 55, right? Um, I don't think for that one it's graded, no. The work is not. Right, right, right. Okay, is this our last question? No. Okay, just kidding. I thought it under 30, 35. Is it 35? 30, what? Oh, the real, okay, I remember. The real test is 30 points. This one is 31 because I put an extra practicing finding the equation of a graph on. That's right. Like that, remember we did two that were like find the sine and cosine. I put an extra one of those on because I was worried about it. Okay. Is this the last one though? 
Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. We're good. Okay. Given the first term, find the seventh term. You could do a whole bunch of subtracting of 1.5 if you wanted, right? Or you could use the formula, which says the seventh term is the first term plus the difference seven minus one times, which I taught you to do without even a formula, right? 17 plus six differences should give me the seventh term. What is it? This should be what? 15.5, 14, 12.5, 11, uh, 9.5, and 8. Not a difficult question at all. Okay. This is a mess, but it's worth quite a few points, and it's not as bad as it looks, guys. It says. Given information about three different geometric sequences, compare the value of the ratio of each sequence, rank the sequences in order from least to greatest, explain your reasoning. Okay, so here's my work. This one has an R value of what? Can you just pull it out of that mess? R equals five fourths or 1.25, okay? Can you pull the R value out of this mess? R equals two. This is the one that needs some work. Okay, we can do this. Three comma something comma 18.75. How did we do this? Three times what? R squared, right? Must equals 18.75, so divide for me. Six, six point two five, and then we square root, and we get r equals two point five. Now, it should really be plus or minus because we can't tell if that middle term is negative. Okay, it won't matter on the. I shouldn't say that. Just use the positive. Well, it won't matter on the final because I think it's probably like the smallest one anyway, something or the biggest. I don't know. Okay. We're going to go with it's positive. Just use the positive on the final. It's fine. It might even be a cube root and then it wouldn't matter. But what are those numbers in order from least to greatest? 1.25. Two and two point five, right? There's my explanation. So they go A, then B, then C. It probably doesn't go A, B, C, and it could, I guess. I have no idea. But do you need to see another example like that one, or does that make sense? You just find the R's. I. I feel bad because like that exact kind of question hasn't been on a test or quiz, but each part of it has, right? Find the R of each piece, so it shouldn't be that complicated. Yeah, it's 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 called a DOK three or four because it has multi-part. Okay.